So today I'm going to be looking at black and white conversion in Lightroom. So first thing we need to do is get our image up and as you can see here I've got this nice mountain scene that I found. And the first thing we need to do in Lightroom is to click black and white. And as you can see it converts it to black and white. Now this is the same as the black and white um, filter within Photoshop. We can use it a lot more effectively within Lightroom. So now we can just start to edit. First of all, just using the sliders down here, we've also got a black and white colour mix as well. So we can adjust these levels and just to try and get the picture looking the best we can. The first things first, I'd just like to bring everything up very slightly on the exposure half a stop. As you can see, we've got blocked out shadows here. So using the shadow slider here, Let's just bring those up a little bit and just see what is hiding underneath there. Pop a little bit of a black point in there as well. And I can see we just started to lose a little bit of detail up here. So we will just bring back in the highlights at the same time as well. And we're not too bad. However, we can do better with this. So what I'm going to be using is the brush tool, the radial selection mask and the gradient mask as well. So what I want to do is just bring in a little bit more gradient in the sky up here, a bit more drama, shall we say. So I'm just going to pull down from the top and then I'm just going to bring in a little bit of exposure in the sky there. Now I'm quite happy with this here, this, this mountain top and the, the contrast in there, but I'm not too happy with this area here. You can just use a brush and create a mask. So tick the show mask selector down here. Then we just paint in a mask over these trees here. I mean, if you do go over, like make a mistake like I just did there, you just hold Alt and it turns to a minus and then you can just minus it out. Now we created a mask. So I'm just going to turn off the show mask and now just going to use these sliders again to just perhaps just bring this in a little bit. Just going to add a little bit of clarity as well. And with that brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpening as well, just to this area here. Just going to add a radial mask as well in here. And we can just drag this and it's just an elliptical elliptical mask. As you can see, it just goes over and we can just put it where we'd like on here. And we're just gonna bring it down. It feathers the edges as well. And then we can just start to again edit. So we can go really bright or really low. So we just need to kind of edit these bits in here and just see where we can go and we want it to look quite natural. So now we can just start to carry on and play with this as well. But those tools we can also use on portraits as well, which I'll show you in a second. But that's what we can use it for on a landscape. And we can use these tools. The gradient tool is really good just for bringing in skies. And also the brush tool. If we've got any highlights burnt out like this bit up here, we can just go over it like that with a mask. And we can just tick this button and we can just see that's masked out now. Then we can just bring it back in just by using some of the tools here or the exposure tool. Just very slightly and very gently just bring this back in. Right, so I hope that's helped a little bit and will improve your landscape photography a little bit. Now let's look at a portrait. Now I've already clicked black and white in here. 
and as you can see Lightroom has given us this result. A bit murky, a bit washed out shall we say. So we just need to improve this and just to really make this picture pop. So easiest way to do that is just adjust the contrast. And as you can see, we can really go one way or the other. I'm gonna go in the middle, just make it pop a little bit more like that. And then just bring in the blacks ever so slightly to so there. We lost a bit of detail in the hair here by doing that, but we will bring that back in a little bit later on. Now, the picture still seems a little bit flat to me. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lighting. So I'm gonna add in a gradient mask. So I'm just gonna select the tool I'm just going to drag in from this left hand side. I'm just going to put the gradient there. Nothing's happening at the minute because I haven't applied anything in the tools up here. So I'm just going to start by playing with the exposure in here and just trying to get the look I want. I want a little bit more on her eye there. So I'm just going to drag it across a little bit more. So that's that. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more of something going on in there. It's not quite right yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in on the eyes here, because I want these to pop a little bit more. So just at the minute, just a little bit flat. So what I'm gonna do is click on the radial masks here. And then I'm just gonna create an elliptical shape. It will just fit over her eyes here. And then very simply, I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. Now, as you can see, we are using the black of a um, pupil in here. So I'm just going to bring back the black by using the black point as well as the shadows. Just to bring those little bits back for me. And then add in a little bit more. There we are. A little bit more contrast and things. So I'm just going to do it with the same with this side as well. And now those eyes pop a little bit more out of the picture. Okay, so now the eyes are popping a little bit more. What I wanna do is just add a little bit more detail to the mouth here. And I'm gonna do that by the brush tool. And I'm gonna make sure I have auto mask selected down here. Then also tick the show selected mask overlay on here. This makes this easier we'll see that red line and that is just showing us where we are painting and then we can just paint in and where our mask is going to be so there we are and then I like just to turn that off so then I can see my adjustments on this mask and this layer here so I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity in there as well and a little bit of contrast as well there we are so, using the same tool, what I'm gonna be doing is just, we wanna add in this loss of detail in the hair here. I'm gonna do that again by using the brush tool and the auto mask. Just gonna select, show selected mask again. Then I'm just gonna paint over and make sure I just go over all the hair that I need to bring in. Now, I'm just gonna bring in the shoulder as well. Ooh, went on to the jacket there. I will just take that out in two seconds. There we are. Let me just take that out. There we go, and a little bit in here as well. Lovely, like I say, you can always go back and refine this mask as well. Okay, so let's just turn off the, the actual red overlay. And we're just going to start to bring it in. What I'm looking for is the detail of this line here on the shoulder and also a little bit of detail in this hair here. While I don't want to go too much, this line gets really over the top. It has just started to there, so let me just bring it back ever so slightly. There we are. Now that has just brought that in. Just going to bring, see if I can bring in those highlights even a little bit more without. There we go. Now, we're kind of finished there, but there's one more thing I would like to show you. And now on portraits, what we can do is we can just smooth this skin ever so slightly, 
just for that um, that glossy kind of magazine effect. There's a couple of little marks on the skin as well, so we can use that. We can use the tool, the clone tool and heal tool, like we do in Photoshop, to just pop these out, and we just click on them, and then Lightroom will source a source for us and just pop those out. Now, with, when it comes to the skin, what we can do is we can create another mask around the skin area here, and then we can just slightly blur it or just take away the clarity ever so slightly from it. So let's just do that. So I'll click the brush tool again, and then I just want to see where our mask is going to be. And then I'm just going to start painting. We are. Okay, so now I'll just hit that button because I want to see what we're actually doing. Then I like to zoom in as well. And now using clarity tool, I'm just going to bring down the clarity in here. We don't want to go too far because it can look a bit odd. And the texture tool as well. So we put it right up, we can really see all the texture coming out. We just bring it down ever so slightly we can just start to lose that texture a little bit but we do start to lose a bit of detail at the same time so we do need to just be a little bit careful on what we're doing so the clarity tool i would keep up a little bit just it's this balance between the two and there we are so we smooth the skin a little bit we've added in a little bit more shadow in here to create a little bit more depth to the portrait make the eyes pop and the lips quite punchy in there we've also just brought in these uh, burnt out areas as well so we started with this portrait here and then through all the adjustments we've done we've brought it to here now i hope that's been useful and i'd love to see some of your black and white work thanks very much bye bye